so before studying the climatic seasons we also have to understand the mechanism mechanism of monsoons right because monsoons play a predominant role in the climate of india we can say we can define or understand better the climatic condition of india by understanding the monsoons only right good morning students i uh, welcome back to pluto says right today is our 41st day till now we have completed successfully 40 lectures and this is the 41st lecture and today we are going to study about the climate of india right so this topic is also very important from the point of view of examinations you can expect at least one to two questions from this topic because this is a very very important topic so in climate itself we are going to study about the monsoon so which is the uh, one of the imp important uh, characteristic feature of indian subcontinent right so try to remember this topic uh, try to follow this topic uh, religiously it is not only important for prelims but also it is important from the point of view of mains also because we are covering here the monsoons and also the characteristic features of the monsoon so we can expect a question on the bonds so try to be alert right. so climatic variations before we are going to study so here the major part of our lecture will be like we will be understanding the seasons right majorly we can divide indian climate into three seasons the summer winter and the monsoon season however in the monsoon season monsoon we are going to see the southwest monsoon and the northeast monsoon or we can say the normal monsoon and the reversal of the monsoon right so in this way uh, another one is some monsoon season next one is uh summer and winter <coughs> so three uh, these three seasons predominantly we see uh, in monsoon we can see uh, two subdivisions that is one is southwest monsoon and also the next one is the reversal of monsoon or the northeast monsoon so in this way we are going to cover uh, the entire climate in the four seasons right so before that we will uh, we have to understand the we can say uh, some of the features of the climate of india so basically indian climate is subjected to very we can say various variations are there variations are there so we can see diverse climatic situations in india briefly we will know about them first right so if we see the temperature variation first so in june if we see the northwestern parts they experience scorching heats around 45 degree uh, 45 degree centigrade temperatures while areas like rajasthan desert the thar desert they see temperatures even up to 55 degree centigrade however at the same time in the june only if you see the areas like gulmarg and pahalgam in kashmir so they experience only the maximum temperature will be like 20 degree centigrade so this uh, this uh, range of temperatures we can see in the june month in the summer season when it comes to the winter season in december the kargil or uh, dras uh, dras uh, region of jammu and kashmir it will it they witness the extreme cold reaching up to 40 degree minus 40 degree centigrade right. so the uh, regions in jammu and kashmir they witness minus 40 degree centigrade however the southern regions like kerala tamil nadu etc the we can say the experience milder temperatures like 27 degree so here also notice the range it is ranging from minus 40 to 27 degree centigrade so these type of temperatures variations can be find in india apart from that we can see regional contractions uh, contrast also so coastal regions such as konkan and malabar regions they experience milder temperatures i mean 
the re- temperature range is very less the also temperatures are normal when we and the re- temperature range or we can say changes in uh, temperature according to the season seasons it is very less i mean the range of temperature both day, uh, day wise temperature and also the annual re- range of temperature is lesser in coastal regions this is uh, predominantly because the presence of presence of oceans or uh, water body so the subcontinent part it is covered or surrounded by the arabian sea the bay of bengal and the indian ocean so because of these reasons the you can say coastal areas especially the peninsular plateau region uh the southern part of the region it experiences milder temperatures and a less pronounced seasonal changes compared to the interior region right so similarly uh, when we see the northern part uh, especially the north western parts in india they exhibit sharper seasonal contrast due to their distance from the marine influence so because they are uh, located in the interior parts so the climatic variations are much higher so we call this uh, we can say uh, phenomenon as continentality right we call this phenomenon as continentality so because of the interior uh, location in the interior parts the climatic changes or cli- climatic variations they are more predominant so if we see the rainfall distribution and uh, we can say variety there so mosinram it is uh, near chirapunji it is located in meghalaya so it receives exceptionally high annual rainfall about 1080 cm so this is we can say it is it is the highest rainfall in the world highest rainfall receiving area in the world it is mosinram so india uh, i mean it has a location where the highest rainfall is received not only in india not only in asia but also across the world similarly when we see the jaisalmer region of uh, rajasthan the desert region of rajasthan it receives minimal rainfall approximately 20 cm annually so here also you can see the range in the temperature uh, rainfall re- uh, range in the receiving of rainfall right similarly the north western parts and the close coastal plains of odisha and west bengal sorry the north eastern parts north eastern parts and the coastal plains of odisha and west bengal they experience heavy rainfall spells during july and august this is monsoon period while the koromandal coast of tamil nadu it receives scant rainfall during these months it receives very less rainfall during the southwestern monsoon the we can say eastern coast of tamil nadu right when we see the duration of rainy season also the duration of the rainy season it varies across india so the shortest duration is observed in the northwestern india especially the thar desert region of rajasthan and it is felt longest in the <coughs> south and northeastern parts of the country so southern part of the country in states like the, Uh, kerala karnataka andhra pradesh etc and uh, also in northeastern states it is a more uh, the period of monsoon is more however when we come to the northwestern part of india it is very very less so this is the we can say variations in climatic conditions across india so a uh, few classes before we were uh, calling india as a subcontinent because uh, even though it is not an independent continent it has all the characteristics that are uh, that we can see in a continent so here the variations in climate also it is one of the important factors because of this also india is being called as the sub right right now we will understand the factors that are influencing the climate in india first one is uh, location and uh, latitudinal extent so india is located between 6 degrees north and 37 degrees north latitudes 
so it plays a crucial role in its climatic right the tropic of cancer it passes uh, through the middle of the country it aff- affects the distribution of solar radiation leading to variations in temperatures right the southern regions that are closer to equator equator they experience hotter climates throughout the year while the northern regions which are northern north to the tropic of cancer they experience i mean they experience the climate of temperate zone having comparatively cooler temperatures especially in winter regions if we, i mean another factor is distance from the sea so uh, just now we have seen the uh, uh the continentality so the regions where uh the distance from the sea is uh, longer or higher so uh the inland areas or hinterland areas they are deprived of marine influence uh, resulting in the more extreme temperature variations and the lower humidity levels contributing to the continental climate we call this feature as continentality whereas the coastal regions they experience marine climate uh, which is characterized by moderate temperatures i mean the range in the temperature variations is lesser here and also high humidity and ample rainfall due to the influence of nearby water bodies so this is these are the influences of distance from the sea another factor is the northern mountain ranges those are the himalayas so so the himalayas and the adjoining mountain ranges they act as formidable barrier shielding india from the uh, cold dry winds that are originating from the central asia during winter especially from the siberian plains so the chilly siberian plains are characterized by dry chilly winds so the himalayas acting as a barrier and preventing those chilly winds from entering india so because of this reason we have uh, we can say semi arid climate so additionally these mountain ranges hinder the northward progression of the rain bearing southwestern monsoon winds leading to distinct rainfall patterns across the country right next feature next uh, we can say characteristic uh, next factor that is impacting the climate is physiography so india's diverse physical features including mountains plateaus and the plains and the coastlines they exhibit a significant influence on the climate so mountain range ranges such as western ghats and eastern ghats they affect the distribution of rainfall creating rain shadow areas influencing the wind patterns the coastal plains they receive more rainfall due to proximity to the sea while interior regions experience drier conditions another important uh, factor that is uh, influencing the climate is monsoons or monsoon winds so the southwest monsoon originating from the indian ocean it brings a heavy rainfall from june to september it is crucial for agriculture we call this as southwest monsoon next is the northeast monsoon we also call it as the reversal of the southwest monsoon so it occurs between october to december it brings rainfall to southern part of india particularly the koramandal coast especially the eastern coast of tamil nadu so another factors are upper air circulation so here the jet streams and uh, high air high altitude circulations they play crucial role in india's climate apart from that the western disturbances and tropical cyclones they also play an important role in the climate of india right similarly el nino <coughs> el nino and la nina you might be knowing they also play they also play an important role in the climatic conditions of india so el nino it is a climatic uh, phenomenon character, characterized by warming of pacific ocean waters this uh, disturbs the global weather pa- patterns including the indian monsoon so whenever the el nino el nino conditions are there basically india witnesses droughts because the 
uh, i mean the monsoon somewhat becomes weaker when the el nino is predominant and the india receives lesser rainfall in compared to the normal years however some parts of india they also uh <coughs> this results in affecting the agriculture in india and also the availability of water however when the la nina conditions are there so generally it is considered as good for the india so we will see slightly more rainfall slightly we will see slightly more rainfall during the la nina conditions next one is southern oscillation so southern oscilla oscillation also important right the southern oscillation it is a pattern of atmosphere atmospheric pressure variations between the indian ocean and the pacific oceans it influences the strength and the timing of the indian monsoon so when the pressure is high in the indian ocean it uh, and the lower over the pacific ocean the monsoon tends to be stronger so we will get more rainfall when the pressure is higher in the indian ocean when the uh, pressure is low in the indian ocean the monsoon is also weak monsoon is weak. so these are the factors that are impacting the climate in india right so before studying the climatic seasons we also have to understand the mechanism mechanism of monsoons right because monsoons play a predominant role in the climate of india we can say we can define or understand better the climatic condition of india by understanding the monsoons right so because of this reason we have to study the concept of monsoon in some detail right if you see the definition so monsoon is seasonal reversal of wind seasonal reversal of wind so it is generally it refers to the seasonal system of winds in tropical regions and the winter direction diverges completely between the summer and winter so monsoon can be defined as seasonal reversal of wind so in summer the winds blow uh, from <coughs> sea to the land so if this is the equator india is located here so in summer the trade winds uh, they blow in this direction in the summer month in the southern hemisphere once they cross the equator uh, they shift their direction to so southwestern direction because of the coriolis force so you will study about this coriolis, uh, coriolis force so due uh, because of the we can say rotation of the uh, earth so the air moves to or the force uh, tries to uh force the wind direction from west to east or we can say to the right wards from uh, left to right in the northern hemisphere and also in the southern hemisphere the force will be from uh right to left in the southern hemisphere so this is known as uh, coriolis force or we can say this law as the ferrell law so when uh, you will know what uh, this one when you study uh, more about the we can say the pressure belts wind system and the pre uh, pressure belts in the world geography so here i uh, try to remember this one so when the trade winds enter or cross the equator they change their direction and they uh, blow from uh, southwest uh, they blow in the southwest direction right so <coughs> these are the monsoon winds so uh, during the summer months the here you can see this uh, all this region is the indian ocean so the winds blow from the sea to we can say land area right so in the summer the winds blow from blow from sea to land bringing ample rainfall while in winter winds blow from the land to sea so when the winter months come the winds uh, the we can see the reversal the winds start blowing from the land area so this is the land area so they start blowing from land to sea so here when the winds blow on the land they lack i mean the there is not that moist uh, water content to absorb and give rainfall 
so the winds are generally characterized by <coughs> dryness so here we do not see that much wind however we can the, the outer part of this winds they collect some moisture from the bay of bengal and they give some amount of rainfall to the eastern coast eastern coast of india especially in the coast of tamil nadu in right right the traditional theory of monsoons it says that the uh the monsoons occur the monsoons are result of the we can say differential differential uh heating differential heating and the cooling of the uh, earth and water surface so as you all know the earth heats quickly and it also loses uh heat quickly where whereas it come if it comes to the water so it also uh, absorbs heat gradually and also re- uh, releases the heat gradually so because of this difference in the uh, we can say heating and cooling rates of both the land and the sea so whatever the land area and the sea area we have discussed just now so the ocean it has a different rates of heating and cooling and also the land area indian subcontinent it has differential rate of uh, we can say heating and cooling so because of this reason the monsoon winds are occurring i mean the monsoons are flowing in the summer months and they are reversing in the winter months so this is the theory uh, said given by the experts uh, as a reason behind for the monsoon winds so traditionally the monsoons were believed to be caused by differential heating uh, of land and sea so the in summer the land heats up more than sea because of this uh, differential uh, differential rate of heating and cooling creating a low pressure area over the continents so especially on the india indian subcontinent so because in summer months the land heats up quickly so because of uh, this on india the low pressure condition has been created low pressure so whenever the heat is more the uh, i mean the air whatever is there it heats up and it uh, we can say it goes away from that area or it escapes into higher altitudes so because of this reason the low belt low pressure belt will, uh, will be created here so this low pressure area attracts the winds from the uh, we can say ocean region so this uh, ocean region water region it heats up gradually so because of this reason still high pressure conditions are prevalent here so this high pressure winds flow towards the low pressure area so because they are they are flowing from the surface of the ocean as they are flowing they we can say accumulate the water vapor so once they enter the land area they release that water vapor in the form of uh, monsoon rains so this is the theory behind the monsoon similarly uh, when winter occurs the situation reverses so in winter continents cooler faster than the oceans leading to a high pressure over the continents subcontinent india over the continents especially on the indian subcontinent so the air i mean the high pressure area will be created so because of that reason the winds in the winter season the winds start flowing uh, from the land towards the ocean area so this will uh, this will be called as the reversal of the monsoonal winds so criticism if we see so one uh, particular expert flown he criticized uh, this uh, theory of differential heating and uh, we can say heating and cooling he said that only this phenomenon differential heating and uh, we can say cooling characteristics of the both land and sea it is not sufficient to explain the theory of monsoon and further he said that there are several other factors that are affecting the monsoons in india right so basically he belongs uh, he comes from germany so he says that uh, he criticized the traditional theory arguing that differential heating alone cannot explain the global scale seasonal wind reversals he proposed that the seasonal shift of pressure and wind wind belts under the influence of the 
సైన్స్ మూమెంట్ ఇట్ ఆల్సో ప్లేస్ అన్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ రోల్ ఇన్ ది మాన్సూన్స్ సో హి సెట్ దట్ ఇన్ సమ్మర్ నార్త్ వర్డ్ షిఫ్ట్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇంటర్ ఇంటర్ ట్రోపికల్ కన్వర్జెన్స్ జోన్ సో హి సెట్ దట్ right so there will be intertropical converse uh, convergence zone so tropics will be there you know so the winds they generally itc itc z will be located uh, to the 5 degree northwards uh, from the equator so itc z will be there where uh, uh, in this particular zone the winds uh, from the both the hemispheres they converge here so because of this reason it is known as the inter tropical convergence zone so in summer this particular zone further shifts northwards so it further shifts northwards creating a low pressure area in this land region so because of this region also the winds the winds from the ocean surface they blow towards the land mass and because of that reason the rainfall occurs so so he said that in summer the itc jet it creates a low pressure area over the northwestern northern uh, northwestern and northern parts of india intensifying due to high temperatures drawing marine winds as southwestern parts so this addition is given by sloan a meteorologist in germany he has given this explanation right. so in winter the itc jet it shifts southwards and it uh, and a mild high pressure area forms over the north north eastern india intensified by equator ward shift of the subtropical high pressure belt leading to the onset of uh, retreating monsoons blowing from the north eastern region so this will leads to the we can say northwestern monsoon apart from that additional fa- factors that are influencing the monsoon are right so these are subtropical westerly and tropical easterly jet streams they also play a crucial role in the monsoons in winters the subtropical westerly jet streams over india they cause high pressure intensifying the northeastern monsoon uh, in summer these jet streams shift northwards and tropical easterly jet stream jets develop over india affecting the onset of southwest monsoons and causing variations uh, in their timing also right so these are the additional factors especially the uh, westerly and uh, easterly jet streams they are also they are also uh, impacting the monsoon in india right here in the image you can see the onset of monsoon on different age, uh, different uh, regions on different uh, we can say dates all right so here uh, one more thing you have to understand is there will be two branches of the monsoon this is west branch this will be eastern branch right so this eastern branch covers this particular area and also once it enters the indo gangetic plains it also gives rainfall here till delhi so western branch especially covers the western coast region of india right so here dates are there so basically the southwest monsoons hit the kerala coast uh, generally on the 1st of june right so it is that uh, when the southwest monsoon hit the kerala coast it is known as the onset of the monsoons onset of monsoons so generally by the mid of july we can say by the mid of july the entire country will be covered by the monsoon right so this is some brief information about the monsoons next we will understand the uh, seasons Uh, the major aspect of our class the seasons we will understand so generally india can be divided into three major seasons and the we can say the rainy season it can further be divided into two subgroups so climatologically all together it will be divided into four seasons it is the cold weather season it will be december to uh, february generally we can also include november here 
generally uh, three months period we can see intensive cold conditions in india it is december to february next is hot weather uh, season it is march to may uh, right so in south we can see till march to may and in uh, northern northern india we can see these conditions till june also right next one is advancing southwest monsoon season this we can see uh, in the months of june to september next one is the retreating southwest monsoon season it is generally seen during the october and the november so this two seasons combined we know them as the rainy season so these are the four major uh, climatic seasons right the cold weather season on set and the characteristics if you see the cold weather season typically be, uh, begins in november in india with january being the coldest month across the most parts of the country the daily temperatures remain below 21 degrees centigrade in the northern plains right and in the northern mountain regions during this period night temperatures often drop below freezing points in the we can say the northern part of india right so leading to widespread damage to standing crops due to frost conditions right high pressure area and the north east monsoon winds also witnessed during this season so a feeble high pressure area develops over northern india during this season resulting the onset of northeastern monsoon in india so in the northern plains the winds blow westerly due to the relief remaining cold and dry typically not causing any rain over the most part of the country because they are flowing from the land area so because of this reason they are devoid of any moisture so basically these winds are cold and dry however they bring a rainfall along the coromandel coast especially in the coast of tamil nadu because some of these winds they collect the some of the moisture from the bay of bengal and they give rainfall to the coromandel coast right western disturbances also can observed uh, during this period so another character, characteristic feature is the, of this season is succession of depressions known as western disturbances uh, originating in the mediterranean region right so they originate western disturbances originate in the mediterranean region so they flow especially to the northwestern part of india bringing some rain and the thunderstorms also we can right so these depressions move with the westerly jet streams covering a long distance over iraq iran and pakistan before reaching india around mid december right so they uh, their arrival leads to increased temperatures and light rains over the northern plains while also causing widespread snowfall over the western himalayas and adjoining regions hail storms triggered by these disturbances can cause significant damage to the standing rabi crops in the northwestern plains while meager rainfall they bring is crucial for unirrigated areas particularly wheat for wheat cultivation right so if we see the impact on peninsular uh, india so peninsular india lacks a well defined winter season uh, with mean monthly temperatures uh, in only generally the mean uh, temperatures are about 20 degree centigrade so we cannot see a predominant winter season when it comes to the southern part of this especially this right so the coastal plains they experience minimal seasonal changes with mean monthly temperatures exceeding 27 degrees in places like tiruvananthapuram however chennai may be recorded local lower temperatures around 25 degrees centigrade during december and early january due to rains caused by the north east monsoon winds right this is about the winter season next is hot weather season or summer season right onset and duration so it is typically be, uh, begins with the apparent movement of the sun towards the northward so if this is the equator so the sun moves 
to the north of the equator on setting the summer season in india right so spring uh, uh, transitions quickly into the hot weather season which lasts until the end of june in this region especially in the northern part of india it remains till june temperature trends so temperatures generally reach around 45 degrees centigrade in uh, western parts of rajasthan it will also sometimes go till 55 degrees centigrade right characteristic features afternoon dust storms are predominant so also occurrence of lu it is a hot dry wind right so these are the notable features of this season lu winds can cause heat strokes resulting fatalities with hundreds of deaths occurring annually wind direction during the, this season is variable with a generally hot and dry weather prevailing across the country. right so the dust storms they may cause drizzle in the northern plains while light showers are experienced in regions like kerala west bengal and assam so these showers so basically they are known as pre monsoon showers they are diff- known with different names in different uh, uh, we can say in different regions so these pre monsoon showers in kerala known as mango showers in kerala and also in karnataka they are known as mon- uh, ma- mango showers because they help the mango plantations uh, in the dry seasons by bringing small drizzles so the mango plantations will be benefited because of that reason they are known as uh, mango mango showers while in west bengal and assam they are known as north westers or kal baisakhi because they damage the whatever the rice cultivation rice crop is there because of that reason they are known as kal baisakhi right occasionally these north north westers in west bengal and assam may cause significant loss of life and property due to their high wind velocity right next one is the advancing southwest monsoon season right so this can be the southwest monsoon season marks the rainy period for the most parts of india typically start uh, i mean starting with the arrival, arrival of the southwestern monsoon right these monsoons uh, strike the coastal uh, the coast of kerala usually in the first first week of june and cover the most parts of india by mid july continuing till september right. impact of the weather so the arrival of the southwestern monsoon brings about significant change in the weather conditions marked by sudden rains that are substantially that substantially lower the temperatures so we can see a temperature drop of about 5 to 10 degree centigrade right branches of the southwest monsoon so the peninsular shape of india divides southwestern monsoon into two branches the arabian sea branch and the bay of bengal sea branch so we can also call them as the western branch and the eastern branches the arabian sea branch so it strikes the western coast of india western coast of india causing heavy rains and uh, on the western st- slopes of western ghat so because of this reason the evergreen forest developed then evergreen forest pre in the previous class we have studied this so evergreen forest have developed then. after crossing the western ghats the rainfall decreases on the eastern slopes so because of the leeward side effect of western ghats right so this resulting in meager rains in the interior parts of maharashtra karnataka and even in telangana right right if we observe the bay of bengal branch so this branch bay of bengal branch after striking the eastern himalayas this branch is divided into two sub branches one branch moves uh, the east Uh, northeastwards causing heavy rainfalls in the brahmaputra valley so especially we have studied the chirapunji mosinram regions it uh, receives the highest rainfall uh in the world right so it causes widespread rainfall in the northeast hills of india the other branch moves northwest along the ganges valley and the himalayan ranges leading to heavy and widespread rains over vast regions 
so rainfall decrease uh, decreases progressively from east to west in this region so in the eastern region the rainfall will be higher once we move towards the western parts the rainfall will be declining this is because the declare uh, this is because of the de decrease in the humidity along the course of these years right here you can see the two branches of the monsoon winds so here you can see the characteristic features of the monsoon right so onset and variation so there are lot of variations uh, we can say uh, in the onset of the monsoon and also withdrawal of the monsoon so this variation is also impacted heavily by the climate change right so the variations have increased right similarly the dry spells will be there in between the uh, wetter wet wet uh, spells uh, selective impact will be there so sometimes southwest monsoons may skip over certain regions without any apparent cause this leads to droughts in those regions similarly we also see the vagaries of monsoons the amount and the timing of rainfall as well as the duration of wet and dry spells is increasing these are known as the vagaries of monsoon uh, also these are also intensified intensified by the climate change right another feature is uneven distribution this also uh, can be seen apparently in india the uneven distribution of monsoon another is another is retreat variation so the retreat of monsoons is sometimes we can say it can be early or delay so generally they have to withdraw in september however this varies uh, predominantly in several years so these are some of the variations uh, of the monsoons so this topic is important from the point of view of means right so when we discuss the mains we will cover this aspect in much more detail right next is the retreating southwest uh, monsoon season or we also call it as the northeast monsoon right so it begins in the first week of september starting from pakistan border to the northwest of india right this retreat progress progresses gradually when we compare to the southwest monsoon with the winds withdrawing earlier from the regions where they have arrived first right right the factors if you see which are driving this retreat the retreat is triggered by weakening of the low pressure area over the north northwestern parts of india the weakening is influenced by factors such as decreasing temperatures due to the apparent shift of sun towards the equator and uh, widespread rains which significantly lower the temperatures all right so if we see the seasonal transition this withdrawal of monsoons or we can say retreating of monsoons they transition from rainy season into fair weather conditions in the northwestern india right so by the end of october most of the north northern india experience fair, experiences fair weather conditions as the monsoon winds retreat so this period also we can see the formation of the cyclonic storms so the low pressure area over the northwestern india moves towards the middle of the bay of bengal by the end of october so this transition leads to unstable atmospheric conditions facilitating the formation of the severe cyclonics in the bay of bengal so this uh, period only october november especially in the winter uh, in the october november months we will see the tropical cyclones so predominantly we see in the bay of bengal region however some cyclones we also see in the arabian sea right right these cyclonic storms often strike the eastern coast of india bringing widespread rain uh, rainfall into the coastal regions and uh, sometimes causing significant damage to crops property and also infra right if you see the impact on uh, impact on tamil nadu coast so tamil nadu coast receives a significant portion of its rainfall during the october november uh, coinciding with the period of retreating monsoon because these retreating winds they collect the moisture uh, from the bay of bengal and they cause rainfall on the coast of tamil nadu 
so here uh, you can see the distribution of uh, rainfall in india we can also see regional variations so in the beginning of the lecture only we have seen the we can say distribution differences in the distribution of rainfall right so here we can see the we can say the <coughs> regions which are located in purple color they re, uh, almost receive more than 400 cm rainfall uh, apart from that some other regions uh, i mean see these regions western ghats and uh, some regions in the northeast india they receive rainfall between 200 to 400 cm so most of the we can say the north uh, and some northern part of peninsular india and the northern pla northern plains they receive rainfall between 100 to 200 centimeters so the regions uh, that are there in the gujarat and rajasthan and also the regions in maharashtra karnataka and the uh, telangana region they receive rainfall between 60 to 100 centimeters right so some other areas are there like the western most part of the Rajasthan so generally they receive rainfall between 40 and 60 and the Thar desert so in Thar desert the rainfall is typically less than 20 centi uh, 20 centimeters so we can see here in this map you can understand the distribution of rainfall in India so you can coincide this distribution of rainfall with the map of the natural vegetation also So wherever the rainfall is very high, there you will find the uh, evergreen forest. So where the uh, rainfall is between, we can say 60 and 200 or 70 and 200, there you can find the deciduous forest. Deciduous forest. So where the rainfall is less than, we can say less than uh, 70 centimeters, there you will find the scrub and the thorn forest so you can relate this rainfall map with that of the natural vegetation map. so this is the we can say general distribution of rainfall in india right. next you can see the monsoonal unity so this topic is uh, much more important uh, for the mains topic so when we discuss the mains uh, topics we will try to cover this uh, we can say uh, topic there so basically monsoon so it covers the entire india so as we called India as a subcontinent, this is uh, this is one of the reasons. And also, the monsoon unify the entire country. So this becomes culturally also important, and not only econo economically, it also becomes culturally important because the monsoon is covering the uh, entire country. So this becomes one of the important factors for unity in diverse. Unity in diverse. Right. So we will discuss this topic some more in some more detail when we cover the main topics. Right. So this is it for today. I hope you have gained some important uh, information and knowledge from this topic. Now we will see some of the questions that are asked from this topic previously. First question, it is asked in 2020. The question is, with reference to the ocean mean temperatures, uh, which of the following statements is or are correct? Right. The OMT ocean mean temperature is measured up to a depth of 26 degree isotherm which is 129 meters in the southwestern India and ocean, uh, Indian Ocean during the January to March. So there are a lot of facts involved in this uh, statement. So statement it is factually incorrect. Next uh, statement ocean mean temperature is collected during the months of January to March they can be used in assessing whether the amount of rainfall in monsoon will be least or more than certain long term. So this statement is correct. The mean ocean temperature that is collected between the months of January and March. So they can be used for predicting the monsoons. So the statement 2 is correct. The correct option is option B. Only statement 2 is correct. Next question, it is asked in 2015, the question is, consider the, consider the following statements, 
the statements are uh, the winds which blow between 30 degree north and uh, 60 degree south latitude throughout the year are known as westerlies so this is a incorrect statement you can uh, understand it second statement is the moist air masses that cause winter rains in the northwestern region of india are part of westerlies so <coughs> we also call them as western disturbances right so this second statement is correct so which of the statements above given are correct so only statement 2 is correct so option b is the correct option right this is it for today thank you uh, thank you for joining the class see you next time until then have a good day. see you next time